Hello everybody, this is Jaron from MarineAndReef.com. Today we have a guest with us. This is Paul from Nuclear Filters. Thank you for coming, Paul. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jaron. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so we thought since we had this opportunity, we'd ask Paul some questions about the nuclear filters. Um, hopefully help you guys out, whether it's a nuclear filter that you have, you're wanting to learn more about, or whether you're considering a nuclear and are wondering if it's right for you. So. Um, first off, Paul, who is this filter right for? Um, do they need to have the suit to handle the plutonium rods, and um, how do we use it? Well, it's a nuclear filter, not a nuclear filter, number oh. one. <laughs> um, however, if the uh, plutonium you're trying to filter out of your tank is above 25 microns, it'll definitely filter that out. Um, this filter is for somebody who wants really, really clear water. And when I say really clear water, I call it gin clear water. This is for somebody that wants a tank that literally wants to see the fish just hovering there as if they're in outer space. If you look at most tanks, they can be pretty clear, but you see particles floating by, and oftentimes there's a little haze to the water that the light bounces off of. Especially in a salt water tank where you tend to light it a lot yeah, brighter. And the sand, little plants. Sand, or um, in planet tanks where you have lights for the plants. So if you really, really want the utmost infiltration, this literally is the best product on the market for tanks that are in the 50 to 250 gallon range. So it's the best, why is it the best, and how is it different than all the other canister filters we see? Um, it's the best because we're not trying to compromise filtration by trying to put a pump and a filter and all these other things together. We're concentrated just on filtering the water. So in this filter, we're filtering water down to 25 microns. 25 microns is the smallest particle that your eye can really detect easily. Oh. And every single drop of water that comes into this filter has to go through that material to come out of that filter. So unlike a lot of other filters where they may bypass or they have a 200 micron sponge or something like that, every drop of water goes through there and it's pretty obvious when you put this on a tank. Within a few hours, you will literally see a night and day difference. So whenever I've had mechanical filter media like filter socks or the filter pads, um, one thing I've noticed is the finer they are, the faster they plug up. So how does the nuclear deal with that? Well, it's going to plug up too because if you want to get those 25 micron particles out and you don't want to see them, you have to trap them. Um, so that's the issue people run into. The problem with most filters is they just don't have enough media to deal with it. So we've done here what people have done with spa filters, pool filters, and things like that, is we use a pleated cartridge. So the pleated cartridge basically takes a piece of material, folds it back in on itself, so this is 30 square feet of material. Wow. That's 10 inches tall, essentially. So this is longer than 30 feet long if I were to unwrap it. So by doing that, I have 30 square feet of material that we can trap these particles with, so it's gonna last a little bit longer than something that may have a little four-inch sponge. Well, that sounds like it lasts a lot longer. I mean, those little filter socks have maybe you know, half a foot of surface area in there. Exactly. So um, that's that's how you, you can go longer between cleaning, just because there's more material. Just because there's more material, and it doesn't plug up as fast. Typically, filter socks that plug up and the water just starts overflowing, this is gonna plug up a lot slower, and we have a commercial pump to pump water through it. So even when it does start to get a little bit of media or, or particles on it, it's gonna push the water through it. It's like your home air conditioner sometimes at least here in Arizona, you take the you know, filter out yeah. and there's a quarter inch of dirt on there and you're like, uh-oh. But you had this huge air handler and it was still pushing things through it. So we run on that same principle. So if it keeps pushing things through it, um, when do we clean it and why do we clean it? Well, you want to clean it because you want to get these particles out of the water. Um, a lot of them are organic. We all understand that organics break down, end up causing ammonia issues or nitrite or nitrate. So you want to clean it at least every two weeks just to get that stuff out of there. Now, if your filter is a little bit smaller, say you have a 150 mm -hmm. gallon tank with a lot of fish, you're feeding a lot, um, and you have one filter, you may have to clean it every week because if you really want that gin clear water, those particles have to go somewhere and they're getting trapped. So you're just cleaning it more because it's catching more. Exactly. Okay. Um, well, that's really cool, and it is definitely different than all the other filters you've looked at. Um, you mentioned that Nuclear doesn't try to put the pump in it. Um, we have a pump here. 
How does someone go about using a pump? Then? They either get a separate one, and which one do they get, and how do they choose it? Um, we don't make pumps, so you're going to have to buy a separate pump. Um, there are a lot of really good pumps on the market. Um, for 20 years, long before I even bought this company, um, we've been using either a Lockheed pumps with it or little giant pumps with it. I'm not really sure there's anything better on the market. There are a lot of really good DC pumps out there that are more efficient but they tend to not have the pressure characteristic. Um, there are some out there, um, but they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but basically you want the pressure rated pump, um, and on our website, on our box, it tells you what you need. You're gonna connect this to the inlet. Typically you'll have a ball valve there. You're gonna come out with the ball valve there, and then basically the water just comes in and out of the tank. Or if you have a sump already, you can just run the water in and out of the sump. So um, it's going to come into the pump, then out this side of the filter here. How do people connect this to their tank? I know a lot of um, the more hobbyist friendly um, filters that aren't industrial include some inlets and outlets. Do people need to add those or how does it work? Um, it really depends. Most of the people that are spending the kind of money um, in effort to go with this professional filtration typically either have a tank that has holes in it already. Okay. There's a lot of Marineland tanks, a lot of Aquion tanks, uh, they call them corner flows or uh, reef ready, mm -hmm. that have penetrations to the bottom. There's one to our left here, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but basically it has an overflow box. So you can connect to that. If you don't have that, you just have the big stock glass box. We make a conversion kit, and basically this is just one big suction screen. Water comes down into the pump, through the filter, back out, and this is lock line, if you're familiar with lock line, so you've got two nozzles to return. So you can kind of have one go to the direction and one go the other direction. And then this basically just hangs right on the back of your tank. Um, there's some thumb screws to hold it in place. Yeah, this looks much sturdier than some of those small ones I've seen, um, and it really locks down nice and tight. Yeah, it's much sturdier, and you'll also notice that this is full three quarter inch all the way in and out. Um, a lot of the smaller ones are using three-quarter inch hose, but if you look internally, there's only about a half inch, down. so there's really not a lot of flow potential there. Cool. Well, I have this nuclear filter here, and how much of a filtration can I get out of it? What kind of aquarium can I filter? Um, typically, we believe our filters work from aquariums 50 gallons and up. You could put it on a tank this size, but we don't think there's a lot of people that are they're going to go to the expense. Um, but around 50 gallons is where we start. Um, 250 gallons is about the top end. Um, you can use multiple fil filters. Um, we have an extension for the filter. So if you have the height, this just makes it easier to service it. You only have to open one filter to get the cartridges out. You can get this up to three height. Oh, wow. That's about the limitation of being able to reach down in and get the cartridge out. And it's also pretty much the limitation of the one inch inlet and outlet for the okay. plumbing. Um, with three high, maybe you're in the 250, 300 gallon range. Um, up in that range is really about the point we would suggest you go to two separate systems. Um, so if you have a 300 gallon saltwater swim tank, you probably have an awful lot of money invested in the fish. Yeah. You may want to do two completely separate systems. Separate filter, separate pump, separate plumbing. Um, pumps fail on Friday nights just after the stores close. We all know this from experience. Um, if your pump fails, you still have a completely separate system. You have half of it going. If you have a UV sterilizer and you have two UV sterilizers, you're going to make it through the weekend. Well, that's really cool. I like how you can stack it and or do two filters separately. Um, now, I know with the Nuclears, they have these pleated versions, but they also have some other versions. Um, when would I want to use those? Um, this is basically a modular filter concept, so they're all identical. The only thing that changes is what's inside there. Okay. So we've got the 25 micron for salt water. We've got a 100 micron cartridge, works very well for fresh water. It's a much bigger opening, but those tend to be dirtier tanks. It won't plug up as fast, and you may not be as worried about that gin clear water. Um, we can also sell this basically separate. It just has a tray okay. in the bottom. Um, you might want to put carbon in it. We sell one with a big bag of carbon, um, phosphate remover. Um, people use it as a pre-filter. Okay. Um, we make a version that has bioballs in it. So if you have a swim tank and you don't think there's enough bacteria, you're getting ammonia spikes. A bioball filter, 
um, you can put anything in there you want. Wow, well, that's really nice. You can completely customize it however you want it, and you have space in the middle for carbon to polish everything on out. Um, so if I guess I have um, one final question. It's when I'm getting the nuclear, I need to get my plumbing and the pump. Um, how do I make sure I size the pump correctly for my size tank? Um, typically, you want to go to a professional like you. That's, that's what we wanted to hear. Uh, recently, we've learned that a lot of people interested in nuclear filters were a bit confused about what size plumbing and pumps to go with their size aquarium. So we put some package together that are going to include the filter itself, the pump to push water through the filter, as well as the plumbing, whether it's an over-the-back style filter like this uh, for a non-drilled tank, or if you have a drilled tank, we'll include everything up to those bulkheads in the bottom. That way you can get it um, connected for yourself. I think that's a great idea. I think a lot of times consumers are a little bit worried with our filters that they're not plumbers, they don't really understand the difference between a nipple and a fitting and an insert adapter, but this is the type of filter that if you go to a professional and you're a doctor or a lawyer, you want something fancy in your waiting room office, these are the filters they're gonna use. They're also very useful in the house. Not everybody can afford to pay somebody to come in and set up a tank for them. So I understand with your packages, somebody can buy the entire thing. That way, if there's any question about something not working together, they just go back to you and say, explain this to me. Yeah, and that's my job to explain it to all of you guys. And I thank you, Paul, for coming here today and explaining more to me and to our viewers about how these nuclear filters work. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me and thank you for selling our product. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can contact support at marineandreef.com or they can visit the Inland Seas website. Uh, inlandseasproducts.com. All right. Thank you very much.